Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about centre of mass and toppling. Uh, it's a relatively simple idea once you get the hang of it, um, but it is one that comes up quite a lot on the exam, so it's worth being aware of. So by the end of the day, you should understand how the centre of mass works and how it relates to falling over. You should be able to identify the centre of mass for symmetrical and non-symmetrical objects. Um, and we might start thinking about multiple moments and how that kind of relates to um, centre of masses and things moving. But that's more getting into A-level than, uh, than IGCSC. So I've recently started getting into mountain biking, um, and one of the things that I managed to do yesterday, uh, or the day before yesterday, was I fell over my handlebars. So the reason that I fell over my handlebars is basically because I was going down a slope that was so steep that I managed to move my body over this front wheel. And when I moved my body over my front wheel here, what I suddenly got was the force of my weight acting downwards multiplied by the distance uh, between my front wheel and uh, here meant that there was a turning effect on my whole body uh, and I went flipping over into a tree and landed in a heap and Mr. Roland had to come and pick me up off the ground laughing at me. So by the end of the day, what I hope is you're going to understand how that happened. So the first concept we need to get is really what is the centre of mass? Uh, so here I've got uh, some symmetrical objects. And I'm just showing you how we can find the centre of mass of them. So what we basically need to do is look for any axes of symmetry on that object. So you can see, see a circle, as you know, has an infinite number of lines of symmetry, so there's another one. Um, this star has some nice lines of symmetry marked on here. And what we find is if the object is symmetrical, the centre of mass will always lie along its lines of symmetry. So this is the point that we call a centre of mass here, and this is the point that we call a centre of mass here. So what does it actually mean? I'm going to try and type um, using this pen, but it doesn't work brilliantly. Um, so the centre, I'm going to write this as the COM, centre of mass. It is, cool, it is the point at which the mass of the object, or an object, And then this is a, an interesting term here. It appears or acts. Let's just say that. The point at which an, uh, the, the mass of an object acts. So what does that mean? Well, it means, let's say I want to support this star on a pivot here. What would happen... If I took that star and the pivot, and I just balanced the star on that pivot like that. Well, obviously, I think you would know, just looking at it by, by sort of um, common sense, that object is going to tilt and fall down on one side. But why is that? Well, it's because what I can say is this star obviously has weight. So what the center of mass tells us is I can let the weight of that object act as though it was all coming from exactly in the center of mass. This is a general physics principle that turns out will work for in any situation. If I can calculate where the center of mass of something is, then I can always find its turning effect. So in this case, I have a distance between my pivot and my centre of mass like that. So I could, if I know this distance, I could say that the moment, well, it's trying to turn it that way, and that is equal to whatever the weight is. And again, I'm really sorry about uh, my computer being a bit slow and not uh, capturing these this drawing properly. Um, but it's equal to this weight multiplied by that distance. So in this case, we can see it's going to turn. What about if I put a second pivot in here? Well, now what I can say is that I'm effectively balancing it on two different points like this. So the weight is acting down and pushing between these two pivots, so it can't tilt one way or the other. 
So that's quite easy uh, for if you have a symmetrical object, but what about if you have an object that is either non-symmetrical or if the weight isn't distributed evenly. Um, so let's say um, you have an object here and I just put a bit of blue tack on here so that it's got more mass in this region than the rest of it. Well, there is still, still a way that you can work out the center of mass um, and it's pretty clever if you think about it. So one of the things I should say is every single object in the world definitely does have a center of mass. So what you can do is you can make a hole in your uh, object and you can hang it uh, on a nail so it's just free to dangle left and right. Then what you do is you hang a mass hanging straight down and we often call this a plumb line. What a plumb line does is it gives us a line that we can say is definitely acting straight down. Now what the cool thing is, is now I can say that the center of mass of this object must be somewhere along this line. And if you think about it, that's actually pretty intuitively obvious because what would happen if we did say that the uh, center of mass was actually here? Let's say the center of mass was there. Well, if the center of mass was there, then now I've got a distance between my pivot point, or the line that my pivot point's acting on, and my where my weight's acting from. So what that's going to give me is a moment that would try to turn my object, uh, in this case, anti-clockwise. So what would happen is this whole object would twist until the center of mass was underneath this line. Because when the center of mass is underneath along this dotted line, then the center of mass will be whatever the weight is, and it doesn't matter what the weight is, because the distance between it is zero. It's got no distance uh, from the line the pivot's acting along. So therefore, the moment any number times zero is zero. So I can say that somewhere along this dotted line must be the center of mass. So my trick now is just to use simple trigonometry. Um, and what I can do, let's just turn this into an eraser. What I can do now is make a second hole in my object. So here was my first, so let me just change my pen color again. So here was my first hole. Up here is actually where I had a second hole. And I can repeat it again. And again, the center of mass is going to be somewhere along this line. So the idea is, well, I have one center of mass along my blue dotted line. I also know that the center of mass lies along my red dotted line. So therefore, the actual center of mass must be at the point where the two wires, the two lines cross. So it's quite easy to find the center of mass of an object. Uh, be aware this is something they could ask you to do in the practical exam, um, or you could be asked to uh, discuss how you would find this uh, in a practical situation. Okay, so here's an exam question based on it. Um, so it's talking about tractors. Tractors are often used on sloping fields, so that means a field that's at an angle. So stability is important in their design. Stability is talking about whether something will fall over or not. On the diagram, the center X marks the center of mass on the triangle. What is meant by center of mass? So by center of mass, we need to call it the point at which the mass of the object, and I'm going to use the full uh, CIE definition here. So it's the point at which the mass of the object appears to 
to be concentrated. In other words, we can treat it as though all of this rest of the bit of the tractor, we can treat that as having no mass at all, and we can imagine there's one super dense lump of material in the dead centre of the tractor at that centre of mass where it does seem to act. So I asked how to explain how the design of the tractor could be changed in order to increase the tractor's stability. So what does that mean? Well, if I say here's my centre of sorry, here's my centre of mass, so the tractor's weight is acting down that way. So right now, what's the turning effect compared to this wheel here? Uh, let me just change again, let me just change the colour so that it's easy. So I'm going to mark in with blue. Uh, the blue is showing us the pivot point. So from that pivot point, what's the turning effect? The turning effect is anti-clockwise. So it's going to roll the tractor down until it hits this wheel. In other words, the tractor is stable, it's not going anywhere. What about, though, if the tractor went onto a steeper uh, bit of road? Well, here's my centre of mass again. Now, again, the, the mass is going to be acting straight downwards. And you can see it's really, really close to the pivot point now. So this is becoming unstable because the moment compared to that pivot point, it's still trying to turn it that way. But if it gets any steeper, if it starts to look, say, like this, let's make it really exaggerated. Here's my tractor. There's my center of mass. Well, now the center of mass has moved to be outside the wheels. Sorry, again, my graphics tablet is really not liking it today. So there's my pivot point. So now my distance is going that way. So if you think about the turning force, it's trying to turn the, the tractor over. So the moment is that way. There's now nothing to stop it from turning that way. So the tractor will fall over. So there are two things that you can do to make this more stable. One is have a wider wheel base. A wider wheel base. Uh, the wheel base is the distance between the wheels. It's marked here on the diagram. Having a wider wheel base means that the actual, in this case, say over here, the wheels would end over here and over here, and you can see now, the moment we try to turn it inside there, so wider wheelbase, or we can have a lower center of mass. Oh, my computer's really uh, not happy. So we have a lower center of mass mass. How would that work? Well, again, if I move my center of mass down lower, you can see now again the turning force is going to turn it inside the wheels um, and it's going to be stable. And that's why, um, if again, if you're mountain biking um, and you start to get a bit squiffy, one of the things you try to do is get low over your handlebars. The reason is that you're closer to the ground, so your center of mass is lower. Same thing um, if you're boxing, say. If you're boxing somebody, you might squat down low because then if they hit you, you're closer to the ground, so you're less likely to fall over. Lots of things like that. If you're standing on a wobbly bridge, you kind of might go down it on all fours so that you are more stable um, and you're less likely to topple over. Okay, sorry about the uh, quality of the text in those. I hope that it still makes sense to you, though. If you do have any questions, uh, please let me know in the lesson.